In my discussions of dimensions, um, I've actually always confused the second dimension with the first dimension. And the reason for this confusion is because I ultimately left out another dimension. Uh, zero dimension. Zero point dimension. This is the first dimension. And the first dimension is actually the second dimension. And then the second dimension, well, I guess you could say is the third in that order, but it obviously isn't the third in essence, because the third dimension in essence is the third dimension, not the second dimension. It's differentiated by depth, whereas the second dimension has length and width. Um, it's ultimately two parallel and intersecting lengths extended. Its feature is that it is flat. You, know, you can have like a square or a triangle that is two-dimensional. Whereas a three-dimensional ultimately has depth. So it has, let's say, two figures extended out from each other. And there is depth. There is an area disclosed within that shape that itself extends either into the same or different shape. Now the first dimension is just ultimately purely length. And I never really got to the description of the first dimension and ultimately its fundamental relation to the zero dimension. Because the zero dimension is actually the first dimension. Now the zero dimension has no length, has no depth, uh, has no extension. But it is ultimately a point, so it is there. So what is it that is there? What is it being there? You see? Its existence is differentiated from all other dimensions or in some sense a lack of continuity. And it simply exists as being a discrete point measure. That its pure existence is being discrete. See, when we discrete in, mathemati in mathematical definition we mean that there are two points or two values that are distinct from one another and their distinction does not necessarily provide, provide a discernible relation or that their pure relation is that they are entirely distinct from one another but the definition of being discrete in just common language is something that is hidden something that is not obvious something that is implicit and in philosophy the concept of M being implicit defines a discrete measure because it ultimately means that an implicit quality is the essential definition of an object. It's, it's essential nature. Is that somehow the essential nature of a thing is always fundamentally an implicit, it's implicit nature. It's never its obvious external nature. Because we can say those are, we can say that those are circumstantial or rather secondary qualities, accidental ones. Whereas its essential nature, the primary ones, are always necessarily implicit because they are not accidental. It's because there's always a, you know, a purpose that they're made for. And the reason why we associate implicitness with intentionality or something having some purpose or end goal in mind, a telos, is because, well, that is the very definition of being conscious, <laughs> or rather rationality itself. That it's always done and it is always made as the inverse and opposite of any proposition. So whenever there's a proposition, the rational claim is actually always its inverse. It's because, well, it just proved it. You see, when you, if I propose A, and you, and you, and in turn you say not A, well, then you just confirmed my proposition of A by negating it. And that is, therefore, you are aware of it. You became conscious of it. You recognized it, and therefore, its existence is recognized by some kind of external point of view.